Drew's here to represent because uh, Ernie Hancock could not make it tonight. He was actually slated to speak. And um, Ernest Hancock, if you don't know him, uh, is the founder of Freedoms Phoenix here in town. And it's a wonderful activist network. It's a ton of news, ton of activism. Drew's going to explain all that. I don't know that he loves me to talk this up, but I just can't believe that he actually came up with this. You guys know this? This is a revolution. Uh, thing that was uh, for Ron Paul there. Um, he actually came up with this and it's been everywhere and guess what? He's helping us, Phoenix Normal, to uh, progress into the future and Drew's going to explain some of that. So thanks Drew. Drew Phillips with Freedoms Phoenix. Give it up for Drew. Woo! Well, since, since Ernie didn't show up, I get to talk about my stuff and that's his problem. So, but, um, <laughs> I, I, I guess that's where we'll start. Uh, just I, I guess a quick you gave a quick rundown of what Freedoms Phoenix is, but it's a news portal and site uh, that's available to all of you. If you have something of particular interest that you want to share and get to a larger audience, you're welcome to post anything you like there of any persuasion or perspective. It is a libertarian website, but we welcome both sides of the debate so that everyone can be properly educated as to what you know what, what they might decide the uh, the proper choice in the, in the matter is. But what she's also showing you here is uh, a QR code. Are any of you familiar with this? This kind of weird square pattern uh, on, on the uh, on the sticker here. Anyway, QR code, it stands for quick reader code. It's kind of this new technology along with uh, people's smartphones. Uh, you scan it with your smartphone, almost like a barcode, and it'll take you straight to a website. And I think what the, uh, the arrangement is, is we can get these printed for a pretty decent price. And we were soliciting Kathy for a design for normal. I don't know what... behind go. our barcode there, barcode, Q code, QR code, QR code, and just put Phoenix Normal at the bottom. People know what to do with it, put phoenixnormal.net, make it simple, and put these all over town. So, so right, you can, yeah, if only there were one image that quickly identified your organization, I don't know what that image would be, uh, but you put them on gas pumps. <laughs> I don't know. You have a logo, right? Uh, so ga gas pumps, uh, bathroom stalls, uh, the newspaper stand, put it on the newspaper stand so someone goes by the newspaper. Rather that, so when they scan it, it goes to either your website or your Facebook. It can do uh, a number of different things. It can actually download some information, like a contact information into your phone. So it, the, the point is, is that it's not, hey, remember Phoenix Normal and go Google it later. It's bam, right there on your phone. You're on the website. You know what the next meeting is. So it's kind of, yeah, so it's a really, it's a really neat technology and, and we kind of wanted to lend that to you and at, you know, at our cost and we just need the logo and we'll work all those details out. So you'll see these coming uh, for Normal and we'll hope you, you put them up everywhere. Uh, the, the other point about Freedoms Phoenix was uh, we used to have a workshop. Actually, we had a, a Normal meeting in the workshop. Uh, so it, anyway, the Freedoms Phoenix workshop is a collection of tools and uh, uh, resources that, that are available to Phoenix Normal. If you talk to Kathy, uh, we have our own silk screener, a six head silk screener, a dryer, a flash dryer, and uh, ink, screens, uh, all the tools that are associated with silk, silk screening. I made this shirt here. Uh, you don't count and neither do they. Vote here. Um, so I won't tell you to vote or not to vote. That's not the point. Um, but uh, So that's available to you guys. If you want to make t-shirts, we can do it at a cheaper cost. It's you know cost you a Saturday labor. Go out there, make t-shirts, go around, sell them. Phoenix Normal. I used to love the I weird aloe plant normal shirt that it's an aloe verde plant fact, um, anyway. we are we're working we're working with uh, mary jane smokeware who's in the house uh, mary jane smokeware is in the house uh we're working with them uh, to have some shirts there in their store as well but for some quick things like doing marches and stuff we are definitely going to utilize uh some some of this stuff that's going on there they got a bunch of stuff besides <coughs> t-shirts go ahead Drew. sorry no uh, the, our stuff isn't the best quality uh, i'm sure there's a better uh, because you know it's homemade, uh, you know. But like for the Occupy thing, we were able to make you know 50 T-shirts the night before the event and go out and pass them out and, and sell some of them and do that sort of thing. So it's it's very effective to be able to make T-shirts on the fly. Uh, there might have been some other things you guys talked about, other resources. We, we have the ability to burn DVDs in mass, make flyers. We have you know, good prices on printing. So these are the things we wanted to, especially with this Occupy thing. You know, we were uh, you know, we we're, as libertarians, we weren't shy of the Tea Party. We understood you know what it was before it, you know the Republican Party took it over. Uh, it's just another audience. It's just another group of people to go and educate to, to you know, our, persuade, our perspective on liberty. Uh, and, and it's the same goes for Occupy. So I, I don't see myself as left or right, but I will gladly participate in any of these events as long as I get my, my 
fair share to, to speak my message. And we get to do it in a lot of fun and creative ways, and those are things that we wanted to share with you guys tonight and just open up those resources and, and facilities to you guys. So please get with Kathy, and she can put you in touch. And, and if you have an idea, something you really want to go with, uh, let us know, and we'll help you do that. Real quick, though, the other thing I wanted to uh, plug is I'm also with an organization known as copblock.org. You can get copblock. And, 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 cop, yeah, no. No, 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 there's a reason. It's, it was very deliberate. Very, very deliberate. Uh, it, no, it, it was a very deliberate uh, choice. Uh, cop, C-O-P, block.org. Uh, it's a decentralized website. Uh, it, it was a very deliberate choice, and it, it's, a, it's a cultural meme now. It's, so, you know, it, the, the idea worked. But it's a police accountability uh, site. We focus on uh, issues of police brutality, uh, you know, cops acting out of line. Yeah, it's a lot like Cop Watch. Uh, we take a different, uh, a slightly different approach, uh, where it's a decentralized organization. Uh, there is no, there is no leadership. There is no memorandum. There is, no, there's, there's you and your desire for police accountability. And the website is again a platform for you to express your stories and interacting with cops, uh, good or bad. Uh, the unfortunate part is most of the stories are bad, uh, but that's so. Uh, it, yeah, it's, it's it's a resource for anybody. We we take guest submissions. Uh, anyone can be a blogger. There's there's uh, lots of daily content. Do a lot of videos. Uh, some individuals choose to go out and uh, participate in cop watching activities. You know, you go and uh, film the police when they're they're acting inappropriately, or just when they're doing their their job. And nine times out of ten, they're going to do something inappropriate. And capturing that capturing that on film is really important. Uh, obviously, you guys know from YouTube and the the, the immediate immediacy of getting. Your, your word out, showing a, you know something uh, and being able to show it transparently with a video camera. You know, cameras don't lie, the record is there. Uh, so that's something that we focus on and I have a lot of uh, swag at the back table, t-shirts, hats, uh, stickers, I got some freebies, some stuff's for sale. I, I'm sorry, merchandise, uh, merchandise, I forgot where I was. Uh, but yeah, so T-shirts and uh, you know they all go. Uh, we sell them, keep the website going. Uh, we have quite a bit of traffic, and so it's it's kind of a task to keep things going. Uh, so donations are appreciated. Uh, but we do have plenty of freebies over there. So I encourage you. I got the table, and there's a little bit of light, so I can tell you all about it. Uh, she said I was going to get up here and tell you not to vote, so I, I want to address that um, for a reason. I don't care if you vote or don't vote. That's not the point. My our, our my issue is this. There's a there's a building down uh, just on the south side of the train tracks from the 4th Ave Jail. It's called M-Tech, uh, Maricopa. It's not where they store all the records for the county. Uh, half of the building is where they keep the vote totals. The other half of the building is Sheriff Joe Arpaio's office. Does anybody see a conflict of interest there? Um, election, uh, election fraud in, in this state, in this county, and especially in Tucson, is documented up one side and down the other uh, to be a fraud. And they, the analysts will always tell you, we're worried about outsiders. We're worried about 15-year-olds, you know, getting bored uh, one day and, and hacking into the computer system and changing the vote. They're worried about outsiders. I'm not worried about outsiders and 15-year-olds. I'm worried about the people inside government. And they, they always try to frame this the other way around, and that's not the case. It's, it's your elected officials that you should be concerned about. So when things pass, and I was, you know, nobody can ever can say that I didn't support the medical marijuana bill uh, that passed last year, 203. I was certainly supportive, and, and I've always been supportive of normal, but I'm not a supporter of voting. Uh, for that reason, uh, but the, the point is things pass in the state because there's money to be made. It was a cost-benefit analysis. I believe, like the statistics show, that the majority of people want to legalize uh, marijuana and, and in the drug war flat out. I, I think that is popular sentiment, uh, but the government saw that the tide was breaking and they needed to do something and th there was a trade-off there. So now medical marijuana patients don't have to live in fear and I think that's a great thing. They can go get their medicine through a legal way and don't have to fear a uh, felony arrest. Uh, but the government saw a way to make money. How much does it cost for the card? What are the taxes they're eventually going to put on to... to so far. Uh, okay, does anyone... And then there's a whole lot more coming. I mean, you know, the legislator talked about 300% tax hike right out of the gate, and they didn't end up doing it. But you know, what taxes are te are temporary? None. You know, they they all they will come. Uh, just like California, you'll see a lot of this regulation. You'll see them clamp down. I'm not saying that this isn't the good fight, and I'm for the good fight, and I think this is progress and a step in the right direction towards all out legalization of all drugs and an end to the drug war completely. I'm there with you 100%. But the government sees it as a way. To, to make a new revenue stream, and they did. And it's unfortunate that we have to play that cat and mouse game with them, but again, I, I refuse personally to legitimize their system of theft by voting for any of them, left or right. They can all go somewhere else. I don't need their representation. I'm perfectly capable, and I think all of us are perfectly capable of representing ourselves and having mutual voluntary interactions with each other with no force or coercion from the state. Woo! So, yeah! I am for. 
I am for an end to all the state, uh, federal, local. They don't represent you. They don't represent me. Uh, again, if you want to vote, vote. It's that's not that's not my point. I'm not up here to, to convince you that you know you should be a non-voting anarchist like I. But that is my certainly my perspective. Uh, again, uh, Freedom Phoenix, we do a lot of this stuff, and, and a lot of the point is, and it's what you guys have been saying tonight, is uh, how do you shift the, the culture? How do you shift the ball in our direction? I think you're already there. I mean, as you said, stated the statistics, it's, it's just a matter of converting that last 40% that, you know, especially the older that have been indoctrinated to think that, you know, marijuana is such a horrible thing. Uh, but you're right. Once you have the, the, the majority on your side, these vote totals, they become inconsequential because you have 70% voting in favor. You have these high numbers. So the goal then should be, especially if, I, I don't know exactly what, Kathy, what the, the, the goal is now that medical marijuana has passed, if you're going to do a referendum for all-out legalization or what. But, the, but just to break the tide and, and to convince more people, you know, that's a lot of what the QR code is. You, know, you guys do, do t-shirts. It's public awareness. Once you have a majority, you know, especially a super majority, or convince the culture as a whole, which in this state, you know, passed three times so far, many people are on the side of medical marijuana here. The more people you convince, the easier those vote totals come, and you can not only overcome, you know, the majority you need, but then the vote fraud on top of that. So, you know, so I, so I encourage, you know, that sort of stuff. But um, I think that's really it. Again, it's Freedom Phoenix is a resource for you, and uh, and we're here to share that with you. And again, uh, I work with copblock.org, and we deal with a whole slew of terrible, terrible police accountability issues. So, can I say, uh, may I put a shout out to you guys? How many people ever got a photo ticket ID in Phoenix back when they had the cameras? Anybody? I did. Uh, do you know who the only organization who actually went out there and aggressively protested those cameras? I think it's Freedom Phoenix, right? Yeah. Uh, All right. Woo! I'm All right. I, uh, uh, along with uh, a YouTube videographer named 4409 and, uh, and Freedoms Phoenix, uh, they came up with a website camerafraud.com. I think it's still in existence. I think they've, I think they've moved on to a, a different domain name. But uh, uh, yeah, Santa Claus was one of the first ones. They went out to Tempe dressed as Santa Claus, and they they put uh, boxes and, and wrapping paper on the cameras. I mean, this is civil disobedience. This is straight up. You know, a few activists got a number of charges for different stuff. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so there was Santa Claus. Uh, we tarred and feathered a photo radar van, <laughs> and, and we didn't. And we didn't because that would be uh, th th that's a violation of property rights, and, and I can't support that. But what we did was we borrowed uh, a a SUV uh, that looked like a photo radar van. We went to Walmart. And we got a eight dollar headlight replacement bulb and put it on the back and put like an antenna on it and had a laptop and made this thing look like a photo radar van. We parked it on the side of the road. We took three gallons of chocolate Hershey syrup and we splashed it all over the van and then uh, feathered it and put it on YouTube and then it was released the day before in April Fool's uh, onto the internet as if we really did this and we got news coverage out of it. Uh, you know, they, they, the news played along. They, they, they figured that this was April Fool's Day joke. A absolutely. Uh, I, 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 I will freely admit, even though there is someone, a representative of law enforcement here, I was the videographer and I taped the Easter Bunny putting a uh, egg on top of the camera. Again, you can see this all on YouTube. So Santa Claus, tar and feather, and uh, the Easter Bunny did one. And then, yeah, you know, they've done sign waves, you know, you hold the signs, you can hold the sign in front of the camera. And actually, uh, it came from Sheriff Joe himself uh, that uh, a camera is not a traffic control device. Therefore, so long as you're not vandalizing it, uh, you're, you, there's no criminal charge. So you could put a sticky note or a silly string uh, onto the camera to disable it. And, uh, and that, you know, again, that'll save some people from, you know, $150 uh, ticket. Uh, they still absolutely have cameras in the state. Uh, Jan did some political maneuvering where she said, you know, we're getting rid of them on the freeway. And people from all over the country read that headline and believed that Arizona was getting rid of its camera program altogether, which, yes, yeah, so absolutely was not the case. Uh, they still are uh, in all the cities, Scottsdale and, and, and different municipalities still have them. Uh, but, yeah, that, that was something that kind of grew out of Freedoms Phoenix. Uh, the, the, the pushback on photo radar, and, and it's still not over. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of success stories there. There's a lot of, you know, not successful stories uh, with photo radar, and people are still uh, abused by the, by the system. Uh, so, yeah, you can look for that. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. You know, we, we do a lot of stuff with technology. We're always trying to find the next cutting edge thing. The smartphones is really a big thing with these QR codes. Uh, we've developed some apps. Uh, Freedoms Phoenix is an application you can get on your phone, and it'll just feed you the RSS feeds and the podcast and different stuff. So that's kind of neat. You get it directly from your phone. There's an app for copblock.org. 
Um, so, you know, we're just always trying to figure out the next thing, what, what's next, how do we reach the next generation, no offense to the older uh, people in the crowd, but, you know, we're looking for the younger and, and getting them in and trying to make them understand these things and, uh, you know, and turn them into, you know, badass activists like all of you are. 